Let me start by the East and Central Africa Heads of Government Summit in the 60s, where we had great leaders such as Emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia won, Jomo Kenyatta of Kenya, Mobutu Sasaseko of Congo, Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, Milton Obote of Uganda. Now you may wonder that, what, what is all this about? It's because of this man. The man you see there is John Msonti, who was my father. He represented Malawi at this first OE, uh, Eastern African Central Government meeting, which resulted in the formation of the Organization of African Union and other Pan-African movements, which brought about a lot of change to Africa. Who was John Msonti? Let me give some insight into John, who John Msonti was. John Msonti was the first locally educated Malawi who sat for the Cambridge School Certificate, and then later on was awarded an Indian government scholarship to study in India at St. Francis Xavier's College. It's important to note that this was at a time when India had just gained independence in 1947. A lot of our students who had studied there came back home with a lot of radical ideas as to, to bring about change and independence to Malawi. Amongst the people of note was Bingwam Tarika, who went to study in India under, under scholarship offered by Indira Gandhi. This picture shows Indira Gandhi when she came to Malawi, Richard Shizanji is the next one, number two, and John Msonti there. This brought about a lot of change to Malawians that an education, what an education would do. At the height of our independence, there was fears that the British would be kicked out or the white people would be kicked out. But this culminated with the visit of His, His Royal Highness, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, to our independence celebrations here in 1964. It's a picture of the Duke of Edinburgh at the trade fair being handed over an ivory tusk by my father, John Msonti. This also went on to whereby we participated in a number of meetings. This was the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Ottawa in Canada. Other people of note, you can see, were the Queen of England, Mark number one, Pierre Trudeau of Canada, Malimu Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, Daniel Arab Moy of Kenya, and number five is John Msonti of Malawi, who represented Malawi at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. These meetings were important. They brought about a lot of trade and cooperation with different states all over the world. This here is at a time when we had just gained independence. And at that time, I should let you know that those schools were segregated. You only had schools for the black people, the colored people, Indian people. My father being Nyasaland's um, first minister of training and industry, used his influence as a minister to get me into the school. Here I was, a little black boy in an all-white school, and I had South African matrons from the Union of South Africa then, still under the apartheid era. She dreaded the thought of having this little black boy in the school with her. But as time went on, she became like a mother figure to me. At one point whereby I excelled in sports and a lot of other things, and I was supposed to have been made house captain. Mrs. Schmidt, the very lady who dreaded me as a little African boy, tended to start, fought for me to say, you know Ulemu should have been the house captain, and I know what this is about. Don't think I know what this is about. And it was obvious that it was because of color. And it was also important to know that Mrs. Schmidt, coming from the Union of South Africa at that time, we had a visit from the South African Prime Minister, Dr. Vosta. This was at the height of apartheid. He came to visit Malawi. And he was welcomed by my father at Chileka, International, at Chileka Airports. Mrs. Schmidt wondered that this is a little African boy who I'm raising, and that's his father there with our prime minister from South Africa. Now this went on to whereby Kamuzu Banda consolidated his power. We had a lot of positives when we first started, when we gained independence. Now Kamuzu's power grew to whereby he started sidelining all his closest aides, and amongst them was my father. And another person was Mwale Nyumayo. He's where it's marked number three. The reason he's not there was because he was hanged for treason. 
And if you had a picture of him in those days or found it anything to do with anybody like that, you could be sent to jail since his picture was cut out. You had to move anything to do with anybody who was against Kamuzu Band at that time. Kamuzu Band's power grew immensely, whereby he had sidelined all his closest aides, where he had now Mama Kazamira, there you see to his right, and John Temba as her uncle, running things of Malawi. All his closest aides were banished, my father included, was put under house arrest for two and a half years, and this was out in Chisi. You couldn't leave anywhere. We were all kicked out of the schools we had gone to and lived there. This was a terrible time for Malawi, a, a reign of terror, where it culminated in three of our cabinet ministers being murdered, including a member of parliament. This was in 83. A year later, I get put into jail. I was spent two and a half years in solitary confinement at Maula prison. Amnesty International tried to fight for my release and wondered as to why. I also wondered as to why I had so much great hope in our country. And they found maybe it was only just because I was the son of John Msonti. All of this tells us one thing. Good leadership is something we should all strive to go for. Here's a picture of John Tembo on the right and John Msonti on the left. All of this now led to the issuing of the pastoral letter, which culminated in the dawn of multi-partyism. Multi multi that is a story for another day. Thank you. <laughs>